Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk about this thing that's going on TikTok. Am I a Muslim first? Am I a black person first? I want to go over this response to this one video where a woman tells her mother that she's a black person first. And this response comes from a Arab lady. Now before we get started, please remember to subscribe, like, share and comment. Black. So why not black first? Did you choose to be black? No. Did you choose to be Muslim? Yes. I bought it for Muslim. No, you can leave the deen at any time, but you can't leave your race at any time. Plus, these non-black Muslim people don't like you. Let's remember that first. Look at the skin. They don't like you. Yes, they will try to support you because you're Muslim. But when it comes to racial issues, they will not stand. You know, when I was watching that video, I felt sick to my stomach. First of all, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect your mother from your poison amin. Did Jesus say that may Allah protect you from your own mother? Now, before we get to the response, let me first answer the question. Am I a Muslim first or am I a black person first? I've already sort of answered this on another video where they were saying the same thing. Are you a Somali first or a Muslim first? And the thing is that these two things cannot be compared. It's a false equivalent. It's a logical fallacy. You cannot compare my religion and my race. Those two things can never be compared and as you already know you cannot compare apples and oranges so neither of them comes first i am a muslim I'm, i am a somali i am a man i am an african and uh, i'm a black person all of those things are my identities nothing comes before the other so this whole conversation in itself is idiotic i just think that a lot of the things that she said in this video are quite funny and i want to respond to them but you have to remember that these two things can never be compared. Now, when I walk into a room, I'm a black person, a Muslim. I cannot put one leg in front and say, now my Muslim side is here, but my black side is outside. That's not how it works. Now, of course, my skin color is the thing that other people will always notice before they notice anything else, because there are black people who are not Muslims. Second of all, I don't know why you're slandering two billion people. Is there racism within the Muslim community? Yes. Is it a problem? Yes. But to say that non-black Muslims across the board do not like black people is such slander. I mean, did you forget that Palestinians in Palestine had BLM on posters while they're in the middle of an occupation? I don't think that she said that all of them don't like you. She just pointed out that many of them don't. And I think that's a fact. And I hate this thing that they always bring up Palestinians. Same thing, when you say that, you know, I'm a Somali first, I want to take care of Somali issues, they will come out and be like, no, you're being nationalistic. One ummah, what about the Palestinians? Also, using the Palestinian cause against somebody who is a black person is actually idiot. Now, she's right. I'm sure the Palestinians did support the BLM, but BLM also supported Palestinians. South Africans have always supported Palestinians, even Nelson Mandela. As he famously said, our freedom is incomplete without the freedom of the Palestinians. People like Angela Davis, even MLK, they all supported Palestinians in one way or another. This is something that black people have been doing throughout, you know, Israel's existence. Now, the South Africans, they are not supporting Palestinians because of their race, because of their religion. They are supporting them because they understand what settler colonialism is. They have even deeper link to the Palestinian cause than many of us do. And of course, we know colonialism as well. So why are you bringing up Palestinians? They are oppressed people who are standing up for other oppressed people. That's what people usually do. Now, what did the other Arab countries do? Did they say anything about, you know, how they are treating black people? Last year, Kenya decided that they wouldn't allow made to go to Saudi Arabia. Why? Because so many of them were killed, raped, and enslaved there. In Libya, they are slaves. All of these things. So what did they do? You cannot just say that Palestinians did this thing. Well, yes, they did. But what did the rest of them do? And my answer would be nothing. Absolutely nothing. Her own argument that she chose to be Muslim but didn't choose to be black is actually proof against her. Because whether we like it or not, the choices which we make in this world define us much more than anything that we were born into without any choice of our own and can't change. You know, this is a Western mentality. I don't think this is from Islam. The thing is that what you are born in will always define you. You are a woman. That's why you are wearing a hijab. I am a man. I'm not wearing a hijab. 
you will do certain things Islamically and I will do other things. We have different requirements based on in the states that we were born in. Same thing with your intellect. You have a certain level of intellect. I have a certain level of intellect. That's why we do what we do. So you cannot say that none of those things will define you. No, this is a Western thing that you know what? If you just believe it and you just dream and you do whatever you want, nothing will matter. It doesn't matter if you are a disabled person or autistic person, all of those things. That's not the reality of this world. The reality of this world is that who you are and what you are born in will define a lot of the things that you do. Even like if you look at statistics, right? Children who are born to parents who are highly educated are more likely to be more educated than the others. Why? Because they are born in that family. Now, of course, you can transcend your uh, the way state you were born in. You can transcend certain things. But to say that those things don't matter is idiotic. To say to a black person the fact that they are black in America doesn't matter and she's belittling herself is idiotic. Get that out of here. Tell that to George Floyd and all of these people who've been shot by the cops. Tell that to the Kenyan maids who are thrown off the windows. Go and tell them that their race doesn't matter. They just, just believe in fairy tales and it will all work out. And on top of that, her post goes directly against what the anti-racist movement is trying to do. Belittling your entire existence to just your skin color is anti-black. You are actually much more beyond your skin. Now, I don't know where she got this one from. She didn't say anything about she's not more than black person. She said that I'm a Muslim as well. She just happened to think that maybe black issues are con more concerned to her. But she didn't say anything else about it. I'm sure this woman works in a certain place. She might be a student. She has a life. She has a million other things. And this thing that uh, anti-racism is color blindness, that we shouldn't just close our eyes and act as color doesn't matter, that is racism in itself. Go read what people who fight racism say about people who say that they are color blind. And you know, it pains me to see that you liked comments in your comment section that were actually cherry picks of Malcolm X. Like, Malcolm X would never agree with you. None of us can speak for the dead. But if I had to guess who Malcolm X would agree with, I'm pretty sure that the man who fought for black issues all his life, or majority of his life, would most likely agree with her. I'm just guessing here. And on top of everything, race is a social construct. Yes, in America, black people do face a lot of injustice. But if you go to other parts in the world, it's not the same. She actually said that, yes, America is a racist country and there's a racism problem in America, but other countries, it doesn't exist. In Somalia, we have this saying, the person who hasn't traveled knows nothing. And this is true in this case. Now, me personally, I have traveled. I've been to Morocco. I've been to Arab Emirates, Qatar. I've been to lots of the Arab countries. I've also been to Malaysia, Indonesia, Turkey. I have seen the Muslim world. I have seen African countries as well. And the reality is this. The most racist places on earth are the Arab Muslim countries. That is just a fact. They still have slavery. What more do you want me to tell you? And in Haram, you go there and they will call black people slaves. They will just come up to you. Hey, slave, what are you doing here? I've had family members who used to live in Qatar and Arab Emirates and all these different places. They immigrated to America because America is safer. They don't have to worry about daily basis whether they get deported. They can actually work in peace. They do not have to get beaten by the cops every day. Now, I'm not saying that America is not racist, but I'm just saying that we and the majority of us would rather choose America. And this is what they always say. Oh, this is a issue for the non-believers. We Muslims, you know, we had Bilal, so racism doesn't exist. Well, newsflash. Racism exists and it's a huge issue in the Muslim world. Go ask the Nubians in Egypt how they are treated. There are actually videos on YouTube. You can check them out. Go check how they treat African maids and African workers. Now in America, there are rules and regulations. You can actually sue people. In the Arab world, you can't even sue them. You, there's nothing you can do. You will just be beaten and, and there's no one you can complain to. Even if there's a video of, of somebody getting killed, like there are multiple videos of an African maid being killed, still nothing is done. Yes, race is a construct and racism is a construct in itself. 
and I would have to say that the Arab world has mastered it. And on top of that, because we're Muslim, alhamdulillah, the Quran and Sunnah does not allow people to go and unjustly vandalize other people's property. It is actually not beneficial for the anti-racist movement for people to go around vandalizing random stores. And that's not racist, it's just constructive criticism in order to improve the situation of black people. So now she's saying the same old thing, you know, there was riots and, you know, black people should behave and then maybe you will be treated differently. Yes, sure. I mean, <laughs> she's saying all the racist talking points in here and uh, it's pretty sad that she thinks she's actually teaching somebody a lesson and she's actually right. And she actually imagines that religion is on her side. No. And what pains me is the fact that you and other black people who think like you have victimized yourselves so much to the point that you think you are nothing more than your skin. Even though Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us explicitly that he has made us the way we are and he loves us just the way we are. I know. Allah loves me and Allah loves us all because he created us in this way. What does Allah's love have to do with the state of certain people on this planet? As somebody who lives in America, I don't live there. But the thing is, if she lives in America and she thinks that the black issues are important to her, who are you or me or anyone else to tell her that that's not the case? She's trying to better her life and the people's life who look like her. Because she's tired of seeing certain things. Now I am also. And I will put the Somali issues front of anything else. African issues above everything else. Now are you saying that I'm being victimized because I think Somali issues are more important than anything else to me? No. People will deal with issues that relate to them. And this is why I hate people with this kind of mentality. They are asking us to forget our issues. You say I want to focus on Somali issues, you will say I want to focus on black issues, African issues, whatever, and they will come out of the woodwork and they'll be like, you know what, focus on Muslim issues, focus on Palestine, focus on this, don't be nationalistic, don't be victimized black person, forget all of those things, we are all one people. Now, go tell that to your father. Now, if I would come to your house and I would ask for your hand, what do you think your father would say? Would you tell him that, you know what, race doesn't matter, this man is more than his race? I doubt you would. And this is my problem with these people. They will never address our issues. She will never sit down and make a video where she says, you know what, what Saudi Arabia, Arab Emirates, Qatar are doing to Africans in their country is wrong. When they arm Al-Shabaab, Boko Haram and all these terrorist organizations, killing our children, that is wrong. She will never held her own people accountable. But when we say that, you know what, we have certain issues and we will focus on them and we will put ourselves in front of everybody else, then she will come and blame us and be like, you are being victimized. You have victim mentality. You are, we are all one ummah. We are the same people. Forget your race. Forget your nationality. But they will never do the same thing. And that is my problem with this kind of people. If you want us to forget who we are, well, then maybe you should also stand in front with us and talk about the issues that we face. But you will never do that. You will just call us out when we say that we as black people, as Africans, as Somalis, as whatever, will prioritize our affairs as everybody else is doing in this world. They want us to forget who we are just to please them. And the reality is that maybe that worked 15, 20, 30, 60 years ago, maybe that worked. But this generation of black people, African, Somalis, or whatever you are, we've seen it, we've heard it, and we absolutely do not care. We will put our own issues in front of everything else, and that's what we will care for. And no matter holier than thou you think you are, no matter how much you misquote the Quran and what the Prophet says, none of them will stop us because we understand our religion. So, if that bothers you this much that you will make a video calling somebody out who you don't know instead of emphasizing and asking yourself, why is this Muslim woman saying that, that she thinks black issues are more important than Muslim issues? Why? What makes her say that? Emphasize a little bit. Ask yourself, what have the Muslim world done that black people have come to this realization that they are alone? That only thing they have is themselves. Why? 
Now that's the question I want you to answer. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you liked this video and uh, subscribe, like, share and comment.